So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra Kay, and I'm sitting here with the recovering Democrat, Donovan Sadiq, and it is the Demetra Kay Show. It is the podcast and the YouTube show where we promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people because we are great people, but there are also, there's also, I should say, room for improvement. And so before we get started, um, we're actually going to be talking about what we can do uh, to improve things in our community. And specifically, we're going to tie this to a video of um, a woman in Southwest Houston that was robbed as she was going into her home. She had just the day before cashed her income tax check and, you know, she was robbed. And we're going to show the video. But Donovan, what say you before we get started? Hey, you guys, welcome to the show, the podcast. Like I said, uh, a lot of stuff has been going on. A lot of stuff is continuing to go on. And we thank you for uh, helping and supporting the uh, new black media. This is what we do, getting the word out. People are waking up, Demetra. They are waking up slowly but surely. But again, if you, are, you guys are listening to this uh, podcast and you're sitting in traffic, you can catch us on iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, Speaker, all kinds of platforms that has a, a pod. Uh, so you can hear us. So just share it, like it, and we'll get back to you. Yes, indeed. So as I said, um, this act incident actually happened on uh, the 26th of March, early in the morning as she was returning home. Now, the day before she had cashed her income tax. As you guys know, it's income tax season where people are getting a lot of money back from the government or whatever. So she had cashed her check. It was almost $4,000 to the tune of $3,900. And this happened. So check it out. So that's a damn right. So as y'all saw there, I'm um, the lady who is, you know, obviously trying to disguise her identity because they know where she lives, right? Whoever it is. Now, the couple, the couple things that struck me is, you know, odd or whatever with this video is that the guy said, it sounds like he said Tanisha or somebody like that says you have the money. So that would lead me to think, you know, that it was an inside job somehow. Maybe, I don't know if Tanisha knows her or maybe somebody who knew she cashed that check. I don't know. Something else is going on there. I'm just going to put it out there. Something going on there. I'm not saying that the lady, and she's 53 years old, by the way. Um, I'm not saying she's complicit in what happened to her. Um, but somebody knows something other than it being random, right? Because it happened at like 7.30 or so in the morning on the 26th. And so I don't know where she was coming from, but she also has a, a son that is a paraplegic that she takes care of. And she was going to use the money to help care for him. And she says her son, you know, was in inside the house and he could hear what happened, but he couldn't do anything because he's a paraplegic. And so he was very distraught that his mom was put in that situation. It was nothing that he could do, but uh, the rapper Trey the Truth um, who is, you know, from Houston and all that, he did find her and uh, made it up to her and also let her know that you're not alone. We're not going to, you know, sit back and uh, and let this happen to you and, and let you, you know, suffer in silence. And so it sounds like he uh, took care of her financially and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But Donovan, what say you when you see that? Okay. Well, first of all, what a damn shame. What a damn shame. It's a term that I use on uh, my show here on the West Coast. I call it roaching. And what roaches do is they, when there's no food or crumbs for them to eat, they eat off each other. And what you just saw in that video was an example of uh, people roaching on each other. So let me say this. I saw a young man pants sagging off his ass. I don't even know how he was running up to her without falling down on his ass. Um, 
you know, I have a lot of questions. Like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to, to berate the uh, victim of this or anything, but with everything being digital, why would you run around with that kind of money in your, uh, per, on your person? Um, maybe, you know, maybe she, she had to do something with cash. I don't know. But again, this is a good example of why you should have a bank account or some kind of digital accounts where you don't have to carry these large sums of money. But that's after the fact. But it's just so sad that we are preying on people within our community. And like you said, at that early in the morning, there's only a few people that would know mama or grandma or somebody would would be coming home at a certain time and would have that kind of money because because using that logic then you should be able to rob anybody because you're going to assume everybody has money in their purse, right? Using logic, if you didn't know, somebody knew something to where this woman was targeted. Yeah, like why not catch her outside of the cat check cashing or wherever she was cashing a check or anywhere else, but you roll up to her house and she says, you know, as she was going into the house, she heard this, you know, so she was like, what the heck is going on? You know, somebody tripping or whatever. And she said it never, she never even imagined that they were coming to, you know, rob her. And as you can also see, you know, she threw everything she had at him. Like, here, you ain't got to try to touch me. You ain't got to try to rough me up. And, you know, she said he also said to her, I'll blow your, you know, mother effing head off. And he did have a gun and all of that. And so, I, you know, think her throwing her stuff was just a way of saying, listen, and I ain't, you know, you ain't got to try to do nothing to me. Right, Here's you got everything it. you need. You got right. it. Mm -hmm. so, which is, you know, you know, which is the proper response that you should do, especially if you're an elderly person or a single woman and stuff. Even if you're a single guy, let the police handle it because at that point, you, you know, I mean, it ain't worth it. That money ain't worth whatever's in your purse, whatever's in your wallet. It could be replaced. It could be replaced. It's just not worth it. And that's what she said. She was like, you know, yeah, I lost the money, but I, I, I still have my life because we know, especially, you know, just in general, right? When a lot of people are robbed, they don't get to walk away with their life. And we hear stories of people who yeah. lose their life over five dollars, you know, uh, or, or, or next to nothing. I know out mm -hmm. here um, there's this big thing going on with people stealing Cadillac converters. Um, and for what I understand, yeah. there was a police officer not too long ago. I think they had a funeral yesterday. Um, that was killed, I guess. I don't know if he was undercover. I don't know the details of it. Somebody would just tell me about it. Well, uh, they, being the criminals, were in the process of stealing a uh, Cadillac converter. He came out and caught them, and they killed him. And I think, the, you know, it was worth about $500 or whatever it is, but they were caught. And I think it was a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, and a 19-year-old who did that. Just throw, the, just, th just throw their lives away. Just walk into prison. We keep talking about the white man, but... Yes, the white man is an issue and the white police is an issue. But how do you explain what we just saw? How do you explain that? Well, so that's what we're going to try to do, you know, for these next uh, 50 minutes or so is try to explain what we saw and how we can stop seeing that even more. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with something and uh, I want to touch upon it. The people, politicians and the parents, because. The everybody, the people, politicians, the parents are all to blame. Now, I don't know how old those the, the guy was who did it, but it seems like he was fairly young. Doesn't seem like he was an older man, maybe young 20s, maybe, you know, late teens or what. I don't know, you know, but he didn't seem like he was an older guy. And so when you see something like that, yeah, you got to draw the parents into it. You got to draw the politicians into it and you got to draw the people. Now, I want to explain this and let's start with the people, Donovan. So, well, no, actually, let's start with the parents because I mm -hmm. think that's where it starts. Okay, so mm -hmm. you talk about the parents, and I know we sometimes when you say, "Oh, it's the parents at fault," right? I don't know that to be the case in the situation, but to say in general, mm -hmm. a lot of times you have people say, "Well, you know, you could be the best parent and still raise the worst kids." Yeah, that's true. You mm -hmm. can, you know, be the best parent in some ways somehow you, you raise the bad seed right maybe it's genetically you know right. no I, I believe it is genetic so sometimes it is genetic yeah maybe you do have a damien or something like that mm -hmm. you know from the omen but in a lot of cases you know who you're raising right in a lot of cases when you have people who do things like that maybe they're not being taught right from wrong maybe as you know i've heard you use this analogy before you know your son and brought a bike home that he didn't pay for, you didn't pay for, 
but you never checked him and said where'd you get this bike from did right. you steal it we taking it back you know right. so somewhere you got to bring the parents into that and is it an upbringing thing mm -hmm. well you know a, a lot of it is because where where who is the first teacher your parents most specifically your mother but your parents in general now the excuse of oh the father isn't there yes the father should be there parents grandparents uncles aunts whatever everybody's in the same boat and has a responsibility to show the younger people the right way to go about things okay i don't know what parallel world all you listeners out there are living on in marvel universe okay right now you're in this parallel world so we got rules and regulations and it's amazing to me like you said that young man was about 20 something years old he looked about you know young 20 maybe whatever so at this point it's beyond his parents you know he's responsible for what he's doing you know so yeah i i just hear a lot of young people especially when they get in trouble oh i had such a bad upbringing into my parents you're 34 years old what does your parents have to do with you from the time you hit 18 up until now you could make your own decisions from the time you were 18 for the rest of your life what does your parents have to do with it right and yeah you, you make a good point i mean at some point in time you got to take responsibility for your actions right like mm -hmm. you said especially if you are grown you know at some point in time you know it's wrong to run up on a woman in her yard and you know rob her of her belongings and you know and scare the crap out of her i mean what if she would have had a heart attack or something i know i would have if i would have you know been coming home and i turned around and saw somebody running at me with a gun i probably would have died right there on the spot just to keep it real with you right but so yeah like you said i mean it's at some point in time you got to take responsibility of yourself but i want to break down the, the parental components you know being the mom and the dad but go ahead what are you going to say well, well i was just going to say this too you know seeing something like this my, my question is where are the people in the neighborhood the gang members and the people that claim their territory you know, gangsters used to have a code. There were certain things you didn't do. You know what I mean? Somebody needs to go pay those young people a visit and say, you're going to return this money. You're going to go apologize after you get this ass whipping so that we understand that when you come into this neighborhood, this is what's happening. Um, you know, in our, our dad's generations and our parents' generations, that used to happen all the time. You couldn't just walk into somebody's neighborhood and just, you know, do what you wanted to do people were, you were going to get vetted you know people are going to check you out well, you know you know who, who's that you know what's what's going on so you know they're in houston for the men in the, in the community and and I, i'm going to say this they know who did that crime they know they know ain't nothing going on in the damn hood and people don't know who how and where they know somebody needs to turn that old boy into the the chief gangster or whatever in the area and say hey this wasn't right just like in the movie the godfather remember in the beginning i didn't want to come to you because i didn't want to get into trouble god was like i understand and i understand you know what i mean that's what should happen with, with some of these people i mean we need to go back and say hey look we know you're the local uh blood or crip gang lord or whatever the deal is hey th you know this ain't right and, and then have them handle that but like you said, though, I mean, there there used to be a code and I don't know, I'm not a gang member, never have been, but I would still think that there is some, it's going to sound weird, honor within gangs. Like, you know, I know that when people do drive-bys and they kill kids and innocent people, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, when they go in there, at least it was back in the day, it was like, yeah, well, you're going to have to answer for that because while we do nefarious things as gangs, we don't do that kind of stuff, right? And so the other thing, as far as the, per the parents are concerned, is that you do have, in a lot of cases, especially in the neighborhoods, there is a lot of single mom situations going on. I'm not trying to blame the mom, okay? But I'm saying yeah. Yeah. it is a known fact that there are a lot of single moms that are raising the children, so a lot, oftentimes, I want to say a lot, oftentimes by herself. And so while we keep saying, well, we can't blame the mom, the, and, and Dr. Ava Muhammad said that she made a very good point. She says, no, it's not all the mom's fault, but moms 
You have to take some responsibility for if you are the only parent in that child's life and the child is wayward and not acting right, then you have to take responsibility for that because you are the child's main circle of influence. So mm -hmm. while the daddy should be there, he is not. But that doesn't absolve you as the mom of making sure you're pouring some good things into that child and disciplining him and all that. So that way, when they go out into the world, they're not doing things that are harmful to other people. You can't lean on, well, I'm a single mama. I didn't have no help. Well, it's like, okay, that's true for a lot of people, but that don't mean you raise demons and release right. them on everybody. Right. And sometimes as a mother, one of the greatest things that you can do is relinquish your child to the father or to a better situation to give them a better opportunity. Because if they stay there, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? But they don't right. see that because, you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, we're, we're not on that issue. But a lot of women keep the kids because of a financial gain that they have for regardless of how the kid's going to turn out. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's true. But I, I think that a lot of the things that is not talked about is a lot of those mothers don't really get child support like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But the other portion of the parental, you know, uh, complex, if you will, is the dad. Yeah. So let's say in, a, in these same situations where the father may not be there, he needs to be there. You know, you can't, you can, because there's no law that's going to, uh, the, the judge and the law can make a father pay, you know, or, re, you yeah. know, uh, put a judgment on him that he pays child support, but he can't, or she can't make the father stick around. Right. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is Fathers, stop leaving your children. Stay as much as you can. And, and you know, I, and we talk about this all the time. I'm talking about, oh, she's hard to deal with. She ran me away from my child. No, 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 no. Put the white man on like she put the white man on you. But most importantly, you got to realize when you walk away, what are you walking away from? You're walking away from your responsibilities of raising your child and making sure that you're doing your part to put a good person into the world because while the mama is there by herself and she's not doing a good job parenting, that's still kind of on you too, because you yeah. should be there to at least do your part. Right, right. And if you're going to walk away, make sure that that financial check uh, is there every month to, for you to walk away and just be done with it. You know what I mean? If that's what you're going to do. A good example, like Black China. Uh, did you hear how she oh. put out that I'm a single mom thing? Come to find out she ain't even with her kids. She ain't even raising her damn kids. It's the fathers that are doing it. That was an epic fail on yes. her behalf. And she, oh, oh, she had to give up three of her luxury cars. It ain't like she gave up a Honda and a, a, you know what I mean, a Supra. No, she gave up these luxury cars. So wait a minute, where's the money going? But that's another story. No, yeah, I, that, mean, that, it's, it's, story. It's, it's, I mean, it's, I think this, it ties in because on that behalf, and I thought it was so funny. You know, because she thought she was, I don't know what she thought she was doing. She wanted to get sympathy from you, from you women. And, or just maybe say, you know, this is why I don't have all these rides anymore. Just admit that you broke, right? And that you made financially irresponsible decisions with your money. I mean, like you said, it wasn't a Honda. that was like Lamborghinis yeah, and old spider, A spider Ferrari and stuff. And here's the funny thing. Um, it's rumored when she got on OnlyFans last just last year, she made like $16 million, something like that, 16 to $20 million, rumored. They said and now that you're broke. Her, her and her baby daddy, Tyga, were one amongst the highest paid OnlyFans, you know, stars or whatever um, there was. So, I mean, to your point, where is this money? But the epic backfire was that she posted it uh, somewhere, I think on the shade room or somewhere, and then mm -hmm. the shade room got a hold of it. One of those rags, mag tabloids, and Tyga, which is the uh, uh her son King's father, yeah. mm -hmm. got on there. And, and no, Rob Kardashian got on there first. It was like, wait a minute, you lying? Because first of mm -hmm. all, I have her through like Tuesday through yeah. Saturday or something like that, or yeah, Sunday. You your kids uh, uh, two days a week. Two days a week, and I pay. You know, uh, all 30, the expenses, 000, everything, seven thousand dollars in, in child or schooling a mm -hmm. month or something like that. Yeah. I don't know what it was. And then, yeah, a year. It's like thirty-seven. He pays all the expenses, all the extra, extra activities, all the expenses basically. And then Tiger gets on there and says, "Wow, well, how do I, tell me what you're doing so I can pay you know less than three thousand less, like, <laughs> three yeah, thousand less." Like, <laughs> but I have our son this amount of time. And so to your point, when people did the math, it was like. You only have her, the kids, like two days a week. So 
what are you you trying to blame us? I'm talking about I don't have any help. And they was like, nah, you lying. So <laughs> that was an epic fail. But anyway, you know, back to what we were saying. I mean, we I think to, to sum the parent part up, it takes two parents to make yeah. the child, and it takes two parents to raise the child. So oh, mom's point of order. Huh? Point of order. I got a point of order. Sure. I don't understand this, okay? Let's say the father doesn't want to be there. The father usually has a mother and cousins and all kinds of other people on the other side of family that, you know, that love, you know, the family, whatever those, you know, you've got the extended family members. Why is it that you run into a lot of these women that alienate the child from their other side of the family? Because I would be down. Okay. Now, you know, my situation with my nieces, I didn't necessarily get along with their mother necessarily get along with her, but you know, but for the sake of kids, I did. And we had a great relationship because that was me and the mom. I don't have to like the mom. I just have to deal with her, you know, in the aspect that she is the mother and respect her in that aspect. But the one thing I could tell, I can say about my niece's uh, mother was she never interfered with my relationship with my nieces. She let me have access to my nieces so that they, I could be there to do what it is my brother may not be there to do or, or just to make sure the kids are being raised the way that my brother would be would uh, want. My question is, I don't care how many uh, baby daddies you got or whatever. My question is, you mean to tell me all of these women out here don't have a relationship with that man's family? Well, I mean, and, and the short answer might, uh, might be no, she doesn't, okay. right? Because let's just be honest, mm -hmm. unfortunately, a lot of people out there just having sex, creating kids, and don't get to know the other side of the family or, the, you know, they, they don't get to know each other's family. And so, by the time, I mean, it happens so fast sometimes where mm -hmm. children are made. And of course, you know, a lot of times uh, moms, especially if y'all have sons, it's like, well, I know that's my my son's child and all that. And then you, you know, might rub the baby mama the wrong way. And she might be like, well, since y'all didn't believe it was his, then why should I bring her? All that other nonsense. And so the, the, the thing to not get in that situation is get to know each other, right? Go, right. as they say, the courting process. Go meet the other sides of the family and see who they are and how they are and see if y'all can get along before you even lay down and, and, and produce a child. Right. Because, because, because my thing is this, if my sister-in-law came to me and, you know, and my sister-in-law is, is in the Air Force and we know as military people, they have to, to go places, right? And this is before she, she married her current husband. She would say, hey, Don, I need you to watch your, you, you know, the, uh, your nephew at this time. I mean, it ain't like I'm going to say no, I have no choice. I got to support her and what she's doing. But at the same time, I look at these moms and I'm like, you guys are, it, it's like you're, you're denying the child access to relatives that might be able to help and get you out of that situation or at least get the child out of that situation. So it's so sad. Yeah, it's sad. It, it, it's avoidable, you know, but I, there, there's so many reasons as to why that happens. Yeah, yeah. you have some moms who are just salty. It's like, I'm not going to share my child with anybody. Then some moms will say, well, I have my reasons. I mean, yeah. they, they stepped to me sideways when I was pregnant. And, you know, so there's a lot of reasons yeah. why that might be the case. But at the end of the day, like they say, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Sure. Everybody is supposed, the village is supposed to pour into the child so that the child is a better person, right? Becomes a good mm -hmm. human. So the other part of that is, um, let's talk about the politicians, right? So in a lot of these areas, um, and I'm not really quite sure what uh, the situation is in Southwest Houston. I think it was third ward, if I'm not mistaken. It's a third ward. So give or take, I don't know. So you have these politicians who may or may not be good for the community. Now, when I say we need to throw the politicians in here, it's because a lot of times when we hear about the hood or our communities or whatever, we hear about, oh, we need to, you know, put more money into crime stopping, you know, beef up security and the police and stuff like that. It's like, well, have y'all thought about putting more money into resources? Because we know a lot of our communities are crime ridden because there's just it just lacks resources to proper no jobs. Right. Yeah. And so I'm not saying it's a good excuse. I'm just, you know, throwing some facts in there. So when you deplete a, an area of the resource that needs to just take care of itself, even on a minimum basis, you're going to have people rolling around because we know crime is about proximity. No matter what they say, oh, black on black crime. Well, it's the same thing in white communities. You do stuff to people you're closest to. And so you have these politicians say, well, we're going to beef up security. We're going to put more money into the police department. It's like, well, have you thought about 
creating jobs. I ain't talking about bringing in Popeyes, Jack in the Box, and all those other things. We talking about some real sustainable jobs like yeah. they had back in the day where it was like a Ford Motor Plant or something. And people could, you know, the man back then could go there, work, and come home and bring the check and take care of his family. In some cases, send the kids to school. What about bringing resources, real, real solutions instead of, well, we're going to let you get hit over the head. And then when you get hit over the head, we're going to send the police in there. Right. Reac the reactionary. Exactly. Why not be proactive in putting in resources and things that help the community sustain itself, opposed to being reactive and bringing in the police to try to crime solve, right? Because nobody wants their mama robbed. Or, or how about this? Remember when we were coming up? You had the 4-H club, you had the Boy, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, you had all these organizations, especially which really helped my mom out when, uh, when as a widower and having to work. And, you know, there was no daycare when we were coming up. Uh, Demetria, you remember that. There was no such thing as daycare. Um, you had the Boys and Girls Club. If it wasn't for that, I mean, look at these kids roving around with nothing to do. Nobody to teach them any skills. I learned a lot of woodworking skills being in the, the boys club. I learned how to play basketball. I learned how to swim. I learned how to camp. I learned how to play pool, bumper pool. You know, learned all kinds of stuff at an at a, a facility. And guess who else is a big member of the boys boys and girls club now? Boy, it's a boys and girls club because the funding. Denzel wasn't, you know, Washington. Denzel Washington. There's a lot of these people that started from these organizations that got started and a lot of them are nonprofit or whatever, but uh, uh, the Boys and Girls Club was kind of funded by the city. So, um, I mean, look at Houston. I mean, like I said, where is the, the Boys and Girls Club for these teenagers to think? And it also employs t uh, older teenagers to teach the younger teenagers. And then how does that help the, the community? It helps the single mom who might be out there working not to worry about her child because usually the Boys Club, Girls Club did, doesn't close until eight o'clock at night. Right. You yeah, I mean? I, mm -hmm. I mean, and I was a product as well of the Boys mm -hmm. and Girls Club, if you will. I learned how to do gymnastics there. Believe right. it or not, I can do a mean cartwheel and, you know, front somersault. And all, I can do all of that, even still at 50 years old. But that's a whole other story. All right. Didn't they kick you out for wearing all of them hoop earrings? Nah. <laughs> 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 but the point that you, to, to back up your point, yeah, there were programs and stuff to um, help children to have something to do because like you said a lot of times depending on where you are i mean anywhere really you see children walking around it's like mm -hmm. y'all where y'all going are you where y'all coming from are y'all going to do something productive or are you just hanging out right are, they, mm -hmm. are your parents even know where you are i mean like right and then when and then, and then when you're hanging out who who's recruiting you the local gangs right yeah so i mean but back to the politicians and why i bring them up is because Instead of being, you know, uh, reactive as far as bringing in law enforcement and all that crime stoppers and stuff. I mean, that's important, too. Don't get me wrong. But why not bring in stuff that will uh, prevent all of that? Right. I remember. And I think you're frozen, too, Donovan. So you're, I guess mm -hmm. you'll come back. OK, no, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, blah, 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 what was I going to say? I, oh, I remember when I was coming up. Crime stoppers. There, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was crime. But, but I'm saying we had jobs like there were summer jobs that the city and stuff they yep. had for you know teenagers um you could go like real summer jobs not selling candy which i used to do that too but where you could go earn a paycheck and then when school came around you could buy your own school clothes you had a little money in the bank type of thing yeah. where yeah. are those the summer job program i think that's what it's called so where are those yeah. things right summer hire but, mm -hmm. right so what we also need to realize in regards to these politicians a lot of them are on the payroll so what i mean by they're on the payroll we know that there's this thing called school to prison pipeline. And so if we give these children something to do that's actually going to deter them from doing crime and stuff, well, how on earth do and I'm not saying a lot of these politicians do, but some of them do. How do they make a, a side hustle by sending these children to prison, you know, because that's how they fuel the prison pipeline is, the, you know, get them in as young as they can. We know if the, especially if the prison is a private prison, that they have to guarantee a 90% occupancy rate. How do you do mm -hmm. that to your investors, right? Because their investors looking at a return on their investment. You got to make sure that there are bodies in those beds in the prison. And so why not get them young? And the other hustle is get them young. Start, maybe start them off on some, you know, minor. Maybe they'll give you six months to a year. While they in there, we'll get them in trouble, trump some charges up on them. And pretty soon they in there doing 30, 40 years when they should have been out years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's so we know why 
a lot of times the politician don't uh, fix the problem because there's profit in it, but then that's going to take us to the people. So what do you have to say about the, these politicians? Well, you know what I say about the politician? F them. F them. I mean, it, it, you know, it's funny. Um, I get in a, a lot of arguments with like baby boomer set people, which is basically our parents and stuff. And it's funny how they don't want to take any accountability to where we are at today. Because who's Who's cutting uh, arts out of the school programs? Who's cutting this? Everything comes down to the dollar. Whatever happened to the common good? And I'm not saying all baby boomers because we're not doing all that. But some things you've got to keep for the common good. Um, you know, Boys and Girls Club, defund that. You don't, you know, but you're going to increase the police. The police are choking people out. You're going to give them more money. I mean, unfortunately... Uh, my baby boomer class, you guys are still overwhelmingly in power. And you guys are the ones making these decisions. Like you said, it, to me, it, it's almost like they know what they're doing. They know you have to create a criminal because if you look at their portfolio and where they get a lot of their uh, funding, Hillary Clinton was a big industrial uh, private prison uh, recipient. I mean, they all are doing it. So, you know, that's, you know, kind of where we're at because a, a good example is like uh, Maxine Waters and that homeless uh, issue that happened um, um, recently with her. Um, she was totally out of touch. You don't go to a bunch of homeless people dressed to the nines and then tell them to go home. You know, you would think she would have had the wherewithal or her people would have said, no, you need to get in some jeans, a nice little flannel shirt and go down there and dress appropriately. She went down there in her, uh, what, $250,000 Escalade, you know, it, it was crazy. It, it was just a crazy thing. But they, like, like, like you said, that there's a, a, a correlation to all of this because they don't care. Right now, they really don't care. It's about funding their families and their thing. But, you know, I have one thing I got to say about that. You can do all the little boule Negroes there's more of us in the field than there are of you guys in the house. Once they get round us all up, it won't be but a matter of time before they come for you. Or oh, for they uh, in the field, they own self. But yeah, right. I mean, and to your point about Maxine Waters, you know, going out there to tell the homeless people because they were the homeless people, the unhoused, if you will. The unhoused. The, uh, they were told that they uh, were going to get some uh, Section 8 vouchers for permanent uh, subsidized housing, and that was a lie. But you know, Auntie Maxine went out there to say, "Oh, y'all go home, yeah, y'all." And they was like, "Where we gonna go? We ain't got nowhere to go." You know. Mm -hmm. But to your point, it was very tone deaf, and she showed up in probably what was a five hundred dollar suit, probably two hundred dollar shoes, and yep. you know, a good wig on, and you know, she was telling them, you know, and smirking and laughing like, "Oh yeah, yeah. I, I did tell them to go home," you know. But it's like, but those are the politicians that we have in office and that we keep putting in office and it's like but you know and not just to sing a lot maxine but there's a lot of them mm -hmm. but you didn't have a problem amen and co-signing on you know uh the stadium there that uh, was sofi stadium if i stayed you have a problem with that where it caused a lot of gentrification and a lot of more homelessness going on you're mostly crazy. people that look like her that's the crazy thing most of the homeless that were affected by that stadium were people that were had black skin just like her. Yeah, so she didn't have a problem with that, but yeah, you gotta go home, you gotta go and figure out how you gonna get these people vouchers and stuff. And so, you know- Nobody works harder in Washington than I do. So I don't want to hear, I work harder than anybody. The, like you said in your video, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, it's so to tie it into, you know, the politician and stuff. So when you have homelessness going on, people who are unhoused, what do you think they're eventually going to do to survive? You walking down the street, you know, with your boo thing and y'all got all these clothes on to the nine, you got your Gucci and your Louis bag and your red bottoms and they see you as a mark. Now, you know, I'm not uh, I'm condoning crime, but hell, if I ain't ate two or three days and I think you got at least a snack in your purse, I might entertain it. So the thing is, these politicians, y'all need to do y'all part in fixing the you know the dilapidation in our communities inside and out so that we can reduce crime now i don't know again what the situation was with the guy that robbed the lady 
you know, but I'm sure if we delve into his situation, one of these two things that we talked about is probably going to have some direct effect on maybe the decision he made, right? And so you have these politicians who will get to the podium, oh, it's a controversy that she was robbed. Oh, we need to do something. We're going to have crime stoppers on it. But you never did say, okay, scratch all of that. His mama might have been at two and three jobs. Maybe she was a single mom. I don't know. Or maybe his dad was involved. The mom and daddy got to work two and three, four jobs just to keep food on the table. So he was unsupervised. But instead of us allowing, you know, Amazons and, you know, these uh, small minimum wage jobs and stuff coming in these neighborhoods, let's put some real opportunities back in these neighborhoods so the mom and dad can work an eight hour job, come home and raise their children as we were when we were coming up, right? right? I don't ever remember my mama, you know, uh, well, my mom didn't work when I was, you know, um, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, but I don't remember my father, even my dad who owned his own shop, he wasn't gone all day and night. I mean, he came home at a decent hour in the evening, you know, when the sun went down, he closed chicken. up. Mm -hmm. Open the yeah. refrigerator, got a good piece of chicken and the, right. and the plate that was in there, you know? Right. <laughs> But I don't remember, you know, not having a parent home because they were working all the time because back then jobs justify the economy. Like, OK, you know, one of your own, one parent can go to work and the other stay home and raise the kids. But so the point that I'm making is if they will pour that stuff back into the communities as they keep saying, we're going to bring jobs and better affordable housing. Yeah, right. If y'all really started well, doing that, then you will see the crime, I think, reduce. Well, well, see, see, here's the problem at 83 years old. When is Maxine going to stop running for office at 83 years old? When is she going to stop? When is she going to let somebody else that has better ideas and can lead us in the 21st century? Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Now, now, even in death, she doesn't have to stop because I don't know if you saw the funeral of the rapper and they had him standing up and yeah. he was at the club and everybody was, you know, yeah. he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> so now she's like, I don't have to ever stop running. Just stand me up at a podium with my finger mm -hmm. up. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly with her, with, her, with her pearls and stuff but, right. um, you know but, 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 claiming but, but, my time see 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 but here's the thing if you want to solve homelessness now isn't it funny how they can write a check and say we'll give millions to ukraine we'll do all this we've got indiscretionary funding right now california's budget is in the black they're saying we're not even in the red so you have all of this money right the inland empire where where we're from has all this land out here right even uh calabasas and some of those areas over there what is stopping these people from contracting with Lowe's and Home Depot to buy those little uh, homes, those little sh uh, tool sheds, and setting that up on a parcel of land that the city or the state owns, and just setting it up to help these people get on their feet or to have an area to do it? Now, I'm not even a politician. How much money is that going to cost? I don't know, but they have the discretionary funds to do it. They have the discretionary funds to do it. They can. A eminent domain some land if they needed to do that and take a whole bunch of these old military bases use that land remember old el, Tor el toro no yeah, that has to go that has to go for high-end homes why we say hey we got a homeless problem we could put them out here and it isn't a prison camp it's for those that need shelter this is what the city provides and that comes out of discretionary funding what person who's paying taxes and working would be against that i would rather see them have an opportunity to have a place to go rather than be parked out on the uh, sidewalks with, no with nothing happening. But why aren't these older politicians not thinking outside the box like that? Well, I mean, so it does really all sound so simple, right? right. But the other thing is if you solve the problems, then what do we need them for? Mm -hmm. Where is their, where is their, their carrot of hope? Oh, just right. keep holding on. We're going to try to solve homelessness and we're going to do all these programs. But guess what? You have to vote me back in. Exactly. Vote them back in. They forget about your black ass until elections later. come around. I know the homelessness is out of control. You know, we almost had it under control. But you know what? Don't put that person in office. Keep me in office because I know what to do. I'm going to make sure we cut homelessness down by 30%. And so it's that carrot of hope to keep the voters on the hook. Like, okay, they gonna do something about it. And so that's why if they solve the problem, what do you really need? It's like, it's just, think about this people. I got a headache, right? And I go to the doctor and I say, doc, I got a headache. Well, did you hit your head? No, I didn't hit my head. Um, 
Are you stressed? Oh, I might be. Well, <laughs> just just go just go home and just meditate. Just meditate. Mm -hmm. Amy, go away. Go back. Doctor, I got a headache. Tell him same thing. And it's, instead of him giving me the remedy of maybe an aspirin, he gives mm -hmm. me all this stuff that might help me. And instead of what? just saying, here, take the aspirin and go home. Call me in the morning, right? So no, I need you to come in and keep paying that co that that, uh, that that co payment. Yeah. So it's the same thing with politicians. Like if the doctor gives you the game, or if he says, "Listen, eat right," which they kind of do, but they know most people ain't gonna follow uh, advice. So if they really give you the game, guess what? They don't have. They don't have any more patience. And guess what? They go broke. The same thing with politicians. If they give yeah. you the, the remedy. They solve the problems. I don't need Maxine anymore. I mean, I don't care who comes in the office, right? You can solve my problems. Come with the frog and come run. As long as my problems are taken care of, I don't care who's in there, right? That's mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why they don't mm -hmm. do it. So if we're going to move to the people's, it's the people's fault too. Now I say it's the people's fault because the people vote over and over and over and over and over and over again. In a lot of our, our neighborhoods, let's just keep it real. For oppression and who normally runs our neighborhood if we're talking about political parties it's democrats let's exactly. i mean it's not a lie i know somebody was saying well you know around about the republicans go to any republican neighborhood and you, you can tell greenery <laughs> you're gonna gold you're streets gonna, all of that <laughs> you, you you're not gonna see what you see in our neighborhoods now listen right. I'm not saying it's all the politicians fault because I think if you throw garbage down on the ground I mean that's not the politicians fault that you're doing that it's right. your fault but there are things that they can do to make your quality of life better like I'll give you a perfect example so around this neighborhood not that too close to me but it's you know it's, it's not probably maybe about 10 15 minute drive in what they call Jersey Village and it's one part of Jersey Village is where we live right houses are dilapidated it's just not typical right so you at know. one point in time i mean i'm just keeping it real so one point yeah. in time they put a, a waste management a dump there for lack of better words i think it was like mm. 20 years ago or so and for what i understand once the dumps get to a certain capacity they're supposed to shut them down well right the city, you know they told them the city whoever it was ah, instead of us shutting it down we're going to um, expand and continue to dump there. So the people are like, wait a minute. As it is already, we got dust on our cars, on our houses. It doesn't smell anymore. Methane, because got... methane gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're saying they don't smell that anymore because it's not active. And so, it, again, it's going to be it's going to be reactivated in the middle of the neighborhood. And so the lady that is spearheading the thing, I, I was talking to her. And I said, have you gone to the city council meeting? She goes, well, I talked to the city council person. They told us that's not their job. I was like, I say, you do know that the city council has to sign off via the, the planning committee what goes on in their, in their right. district, right? Right. And if they I have a city manager, that. the city manager uh, is subservient to the city council, which signs off on all things that the city manager and his staff bring towards the city. You know, she said, I didn't know that. And you no know, shade to her, but yeah, not they, they were able to blow her off with, well, that ain't my job. So what right. they did was they got these petitions, they being the people who live around there, you know, you know how we are, sign these petitions. I said, ma'am, 1960s, sign the petitions, the 70s, that'll work. It ain't gonna I work. said, ma'am, if you don't mind me asking, what is a petition going to do? Do. Nothing. She says, well, let's go, we're gonna get it to the people, the, the whoever is one that managed the plant. And you know, let them know that we're not on board with it. I said, do you really need a petition to let them? I said, you don't think they already know that? I said, you know what they're doing? I said, they're just playing games with you, buying time, making y'all yep. think, well, if you sign this petition and bring enough signatures to us, then we'll think about it. I said, they've already made up their mind. I said, they're sitting on the bulldozers as we speak, waiting for the city council to play games with y'all too. Well, we tried, but there's no other place to go at. And yeah, I said, yeah. Go ahead. The, the only way that uh, getting signatures is is basically useless. The only way that you're going to get uh, movement is you get your city council to vote uh, on the referendum or whatever that issue is. And once the city council votes on it, that's law. That's it. It's done. 
nah, it ain't my job. <laughs> and I said, she was, she was like, I didn't know that. They told, I said, and if that ain't your job, then get up off the seat. That's what I said. I said, that's what the, that's what the city council member's job is to regulate their district. And they sign off on that. And I said, mm -hmm. but ask yourself this. I said, did they, you, do you think they talked about uh, uh, building a dump, a waste site in River Oaks, which is, you know, the affluent part of Houston, if you will, mm -hmm. or any other places where good white folks and people with money live? She goes, well, no. I said, well, then why would they do it to you? I said, you know why they did it to you? I said, because they know black people ain't going to do nothing but sign petitions, pray about it, and meet to death, meet to death with each other. You know, mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. but if, if you thought about going in there, to your city council meeting and saying, I'll be damned if you build or jump dump any more garbage where we live. I said, you know who would do that? I said, the white folks would do it. And I said, trust me, I've been at city council meetings where white people <laughs> been like, I wish you would. This will be your last yes. time sitting up there. You ain't, I, said, I don't care what it is, whether it's an apartment complex or Popeye's chicken, they gas build stuff over there. Mm -hmm. None of that. I said, but we go after they done built it and saying, well, it's not fair. We don't want it. I said, because mm -hmm. we are not proactive. We are reactive. Right. I said, y'all need to get in there and get mad like the white folks do and tell them there's going to be heads rolling politically if y'all allow that to go on. Right. And, and you know, and, and you bring up a good point because you, you know my, uh, my fight in my city. And here's the problem. We don't attend city council meetings. We don't know what's going on. Everything is online. I mean, you. How you, you, you've got city channels you can watch if you want to watch the city council meeting. These people depend, especially when it comes to the black folks. You're so busy working or thotting it out, going to the clubs and whatever you're doing, that they know you're not paying attention, even though all the information is there. I get so tired of running up against uh, black folks. Talk about, like you said, I didn't know that. They've announced it for over 30 days. They put a, a sign up in the area that says city council meeting on this date, whatever, whatever. And you don't even bother to show up until, like you said, afterwards. And then now you want to make a holler and a scream and a noising, which makes no sense because it's done. It's a done deal. It's done. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I, I think, too, is uh, we as black people, y'all forgive me, I, I'm sweating this, you know, it's that. <laughs> I'm still going through the change, whatever. I mean, it's warm here too, but anyway, mm. got a fan on and everything. But um, they know that Negroes are just going to go scream and holler. You know, a lot of times get in front of podiums and microphones and ah. And the city council, they're used to doing that. They're, they're, they're like, okay, here come the Negroes. They got three, five minutes to scream and holler. We just going to pretend like we're invested in what they're saying. But they know at the end of the day, you ain't going to do nothing. Like I asked the lady, I said, you're meeting with each other for what? I said, is a city council meeting member or somebody who can make a power move involved in the meeting? No, it's just us. We will meet at the local church and people who live in the neighborhood. And I said, okay. I said, so y'all signing petitions. Y'all going to give it to the company who's going to be running the, the waste site. I said, and, it worked and in the 1960s. Look at all the change we did then. Right. And she said, well, they because they did a news segment. The news went out there and talk to them about it and stuff. And she goes, they didn't put segment in about us talking about racism. I said, see, this is why it pays to know something. I said, don't you know the media is paid for too by those politicians? I said, yeah, they listened to you, but the racism part ended up on the editing room floor, you know? And then how many Negroes are watching the local news? Right. Not a lot of us. We're, we're too busy watching BET and the videos and... Uh, the twerking video, you know, we're, we're not doing that. Nobody's watching that stuff anymore. And I said, so, and let me ask you this. I said, because the houses over there, you know, they need some work. Let's be, and I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Sure they're, sure. they're left behind, right? Sure. I asked, I said, how long do you think it's going to take before they say, well, it's imminent domain them, these houses, mm -hmm. and just take over the whole neighborhood and make it a waste plant? I said, how mm -hmm. long do you think before they do that? She goes, we didn't think about it. I said, yeah. I said, those houses, they, I, no disrespect, they, they can't be worth more than $50,000. And, you know, a lot of those houses, right. because just they're ran down just to keep, you know, not to be well, disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, no, and you're bringing up a good point. This is another reason why they come into our neighborhoods and do that. You've been living there with Big Mama and them for four generations or how many generations you're doing. They could come in there because you're not upkeeping your properties. 
you're not investing in your properties. So they say, you know what? This thing's only worth about thirty thousand dollars. We're going to eminent domain it. Here's thirty thousand, and, and you know, since we're selling it, we're going to put tax on that. So you're not getting the whole thirty thousand. Get the hell up out of here. Yeah, you don't have a choice. And so, like you said, and like I told her too, I said, the, I said, what is that doing to your home value? She says we are. It's already. They, you know, affected our home value with it being that said. So now they're going to reactivate this waste management site right in That's your right neighborhood. Now. I right. said, so your house is not going to be worth nothing. I said, so that I said when I'm the reason I'm bringing these things to your memory is because. That's why they don't do it to the white people. I said, for one, the white people gonna hold them accountable. And for two, you ain't gonna bring that stuff over here. You ain't gonna even a Popeye's chicken in some people's neighborhood will bring down the value because mm -hmm. I hate to say it. What does Popeye's you know restaurants usually bring? It brings people who don't care about their health, and you you can attach all the rest right. to it. Just keep and it we real. like chicken. Black people like chicken. We do. And everybody else, and white people who live in those areas, or, or anybody that's living in those areas, they typically more care care about their body and stuff. So the point that I'm making is, they don't want anything in their neighborhood that is going to attract maybe what they call a nuisance. Not calling mm -hmm. us a nuisance, but that's what they would call us to yeah. bring down their property value. So they don't allow. If you, I mean, and Donovan, shit, you know, we tell the truth. Go to any of those affluent neighborhoods. You ain't gonna see the stuff you see in our neighborhood. Hell, you go to some of our neighborhoods. They got two and three Popeyes in the damn neighborhood. Like next to the couple, next to a couple liquor stores. On the same block. <laughs> right. Fifty-two churches. Mm -hmm. You go to a white neighborhood. They got maybe one, two big ones, and everybody goes right. to that one. And it's church. in the shopping center. Yeah, or off somewhere. You know, right. like in in, in in the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. um uh what's the name of that church that's off of oh uh, gosh it's called orange um it's, it's off orange uh crest not orange crest it's mm -hmm. a huge church and it's it, it, in a nice neighborhood but it's what mm -hmm. everybody pretty much in that neighborhood goes so what i'm saying is they don't have a church of god and christ on this corner and then the you know first ame and the second and third ame right. around the corner they got one yeah 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 the competitive churches <laughs> right <laughs> you know with three people going to each one of them you know right but, but 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 here's my thing about property ownership and this is what black people were so immature when it comes to stuff like that do you want to know why uh orange county housing doesn't get messed up and doesn't they don't build stuff in there or beverly hills doesn't change too much cuz they upkeep the value of their homes that's why even if a city council member said hey we let's put a warehouse right it doesn't happen because of the value of that neighborhood yeah they did yeah, she they like we wish you would try to put an amazon right. anywhere near our neighborhood right you know but in, in black neighborhoods no and don't get me wrong you know i hate to say this but you got the single moms in there you ain't got a man your your teenagers don't know shit. your male teenagers don't know shit. yeah you could probably pay for the uh mortgage but what happens when the house starts falling apart right and that's when it starts happening. And you can see it in a lot of these new homes because number one, these new homes, the way they're being built is very, very, very cheap. So if you don't know how to upkeep the house, a $700,000 house, you probably got it on a, a $760,000 mortgage, right? Over a 30 year period. So you're paying $760,000 for this mortgage, whatever. Why would you let your property devalue because you can't keep it up? And then you wonder why the white man comes in and swoops in and, and takes over that property. Yeah. It, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot going on. Again, we started off talking about, you know, the, the um, lady who was robbed. And, you know, as I said, we got the three P's going on, the people, the parents and the politicians. Everybody's All at complicit. fault for this. Um, and All complicit. All yeah, complicit. Every, every, exactly. Everybody's got a role to play in what we saw. Right mm -hmm. now, again, on mm -hmm. the flip side of that, it could just be somebody who had a great politician, a great parents, you know, whatever the case is, it could be the case, but I, I'm willing to bet that's not. I'm willing to bet he didn't just wake up and say, well, you know, I got good parents and everything going on and I'm just going to get up and go rob a lady of her income tax mm -hmm. money, you know? Right, you know, and the sad thing is with Big Brother having cameras everywhere, it, it, you know, it's, it's like I would talk to younger people and I would say, Yo, I'm going to go, where can you run? You're behind enemy lines. OK, you got cameras everywhere. I that's a black car. It's got a VIN thing on it. You got your license plate on it. They got a picture, a description of you, all this other stuff. Where are you going to run? Where are you going to run? Is it really worth it? 
Right. It ain't well, like it was when we were coming up 30 years ago where there was no cameras and stuff. Now they can get you on that corner. And this, I mean, it's just a matter of time before they pick that young man and his accomplice up. And she said that she had just installed that camera the day before. Good the good day good before, you know. And the other thing, too, is, I mean, you know, people out there robbing and stealing from people. I mean, especially in Texas, it's an open and carry state. I mean, and you don't even need a license or none of that stuff. It's like the wild, wild west. You know, and it's also um, a stand your ground state where you can, um, you know, instigate and then a stand your ground. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying even up until that person is retreating, you can still yeah. do something to them. So, what if she was like, nah, uh, you ain't getting away with right. my coins? And, she, you know, she ended right. his life right there. She would have mm -hmm. been within her rights to do it. And so, I also think people should teach their kids, you know, while you out there trying to bump old ladies over the head, per se, you might want to be careful because that old lady might be packing. Right. Well, you know, here's my thing. This is one of the only countries where they will not let you starve. You can get food stamps, whatever. So what could this person have wanted? I mean, you know, I know we're in a pandemic or we're coming out of the, the post pandemic situation and stuff. There's jobs everywhere. People are hiring everywhere. I don't know what's going on in Texas, but there are jobs everywhere. But you get they give you food stamps. They give you Section 8 housing. What could this person have wanted? with this old lady's money that he could not have gotten. You, you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. It's the past of least resistance. It's, you know, laziness. And it sounds like maybe it was an inside job to some degree because yeah. he said, Tanisha or whoever it was said that you got the money. So, mm -hmm. you know, whoever it was, like you said, knew she was getting off or getting home at that time, mm -hmm. knew she had a bunch of money. And, you know, it alleviated her, for lack of better words, of her finances. But, you know, that people are doing that kind of stuff, it'll catch up to you because they think sure. they got away with it. And it's probably not the first time they robbed somebody. But you, you, you go, you go mess around and, and try to stick up the right person. I say the right person because if you're doing that to people, you get what you got coming to you. And, well, and, and well, I hate well, to say it. Well, 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 well let's just uh, say this. Okay, you just robbed that lady. They got a description of the car. They see on the video cameras or whatever, because sometimes these cameras are live. How do I know that in my city? Some of the cameras are live because I pay for it and I go down there and I say, you know, what our resources are going to. So I know some of our cameras are live. The police finally corner you and you're in a shootout. You're dead, legally, dead. Right. In Texas, oh. I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even try. Yeah, over, you know, a couple of dollars, like, you know, like I said, um, I actually went to visit uh, somebody in the prison uh, this past Saturday, mm -hmm. and I was like, if people really just was able to grasp what it's like, now I can leave, right? But the, being on that other side where you mm. can't leave, and the whole time I'm listening to him saying, I just want to be free. I just want to be free. I want to be able to leave here. I want to be free. I'm going to get out. I'm, you know, I ain't, I ain't on that stuff. No, but you know, just to hear that. And I'm like, I wish more people who are on the verge of committing crimes could just hear that and take that to heart and realize this ain't, this ain't fun and games. If you ever right. get to this point. Right. Right. It could be survival at, at all point. But like I said, the police, let's face it, you guys, how many people are being exonerated every day that were framed by the police? If they even made it to that point. How many right. people are being straight out murdered by the police and they're, they're protected by the rule of law? I mean, it just happens. So as a young person, is it really worth a few dollars to roach in on your own community? It just doesn't make sense. But I'll, I'll tell you this, Demetra, though, it's funny. He wasn't going to go to the white neighborhood and do that because they would have been just blasting straight out, straight out. No They'd have been like Yosemite Sam up in that exactly. mode. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we, only, we only do it to our own people, and it's so sad. Or he wouldn't have ran up to no brother and did that, because right. the brother probably would have been like Yosemite Sam, mm -hmm. too. Like, mm -hmm. what's really good? Right. You, know? Well, you know? All I'm saying is whoever is, is, is the local gang chief there, and I'm not saying uh, and advocating any violence, I think that uh, whoever controls that neighborhood needs to go over and have a conversation with that person, because they know who, who, who did that crime. They yeah, because they don't get to run in their mouth and all of that. But anyway, y'all, yeah. that's our time. It has been an awesome hour. Thank you, Donovan, for being here on the Demetri K Show and podcast. If you guys would, uh, we have a Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal to donate to this channel. And if not, think about becoming a member. We would love to have you here. 
but at the very least like this video and feel free to share because somebody needs this information and so absolutely we will talk to y'all actually tomorrow will be wealth wednesday with walter and then on saturday we are going to have a guest it'll be a podcast we're going to have uh tamara sheely johnson she is running for the uh, u.s senate of georgia and we're going to have a conversation with her and see what her platform is and all of that and see if there's anything we can do to help her uh defeat that of ralph warnock who uh currently holds the seat and who ain't doing nothing for black people and Herschel walker yeah and <laughs> so we're gonna get into it on saturday and wednesday y'all so stay tuned and thank you yeah. so much peace